So scleritis is inflammation of the white part of the eye. So when you look in the mirror, you see the colored parts of your eye with your pupil in the middle and around the outside, you see the white part. That's made up of a hard shell of the eye. That's your sclera. And then it's got two layers of skin on top of that. So your episclera, which can also be inflamed and give you episcleritis. And then the conjunctiva, which is the very topmost layer. And you hear people use the terms conjunctivitis, which is when that layer becomes inflamed. Scleritis is typically very painful. And you get either a generalized redness of the eye, or you get a focal redness where you effectively have like a little nodule, a very deep red tissue on the white part of the eye. So scleritis can cause a number of symptoms. Classically, it gives you a red, painful eye. And that pain is very severe, so sort of nine to 10 out of 10 on a pain scale. And that often differentiates it from episcleritis, which is less painful. You can often have pain so severe that it wakes you from sleep. And that's one of the questions your doctors might ask you often, really, that that's one of our, our key differentiators between episcleritis and scleritis. The pain tends to be a deep, boring pain. Those are the words that patients tend to use rather than a sharp stabbing pain. So it tends to be a much more of an, a, like a deep ache. Um, and it's very difficult to control. So medicines like paracetamol don't work particularly well. Um, whereas different sorts of medicines like ibuprofen and steroids tend to work much better. So episcleritis is inflammation of the skin just above the sclera and underneath the conjunctiva. So you have this, these three layers on the outside of the eye that make up like a sandwich of, of different layers of tissue. And your episclera is the middle layer. Episcleritis can be caused by a number of um, body symptoms. So you can get it from having rheumatoid arthritis, you can get it from lupus, you can get it from a number of other conditions that give you dry mouths or dry eyes. But often it just occurs in its own right. And it can just be self-limiting. So sometimes it comes and it lasts for a few days or even a few weeks. And sometimes you might need some moisturizing eye drops and it just goes away all by itself. So episcleritis is not a serious condition and sorts itself out in the vast majority of cases. It may recur, and you may need ongoing treatment just to sort of keep it, under, keep it at bay, but it's not a severe condition that's going to affect the quality of vision that you have. Whereas scleritis is, scleritis really affects people's quality of life and often patients are in really quite substantial pain with it. So the, the pain level of it, I'd say was a big thing. Um, Scleritis can also be necrotizing, and sometimes that causes the white part of the eye to disintegrate, and then you start to see the blue color from the inside of the eye shining through it. And occasionally that can make the eye vulnerable to perforating. So again, that's another big difference between episcleritis and scleritis. In terms of treatment, we tend to use much more aggressive treatment with scleritis to get patients under control. So there's a ladder of treatment for scleritis, depending on the severity and depending on the location. Scleritis is usually just one eye. Occasionally it can be both eyes. And that would again, change our treatment a little bit. But effectively the ladder would start off with lubricating eye drops and a medicine like ibuprofen or neurofen. It would then go up to a slightly stronger medicine called flurbiprofen. Um, which again is in the same family of, as, as ibuprofen. If that doesn't help symptoms, we usually move up to oral prednisolone tablets or prednisone tablets, which are steroids, and that usually controls the inflammation. Occasionally, we need to use intravenous steroids to really get on top of it. And then there's the maintenance section of, of, of management. So once we get inflammatory problems under control with steroids, we then maintain them with a medicine that is not a steroid. And there are a variety of options available, but classically we use a medicine called methotrexate, which has been used for you know, dozens and dozens of years and works extremely well. 